Come with me and you'll be in a world with pure imagination. This is Princess Zuka and I'm walking. I'm as far as I walk and I put my fluffies on the phone. See if the wind doesn't hit my phone. Yes. So I do walk, I eat and I poop just like everybody else. In case you didn't notice, I have uh, very much emotion. Probably not like everybody else. I might be a little bit too sensitive. I was admonished as a child that I was sensitive and kind and loving and I liked a nice table. I was admonished for that too. <laughs> I was admonished for being alive, so it's not enough. Anyhow, I never had a friend. I told you I had a friend in, middle, in elementary school, but that's not exactly true. Here's what happened. Well, no one wanted to actually drive us to school. So we had to walk and alone, it's just dangerous, right? So they clipped me onto the neighbor's boy cord who lived right next to it. So they put us holding hands and walked to school, half an hour, 35 minutes. 35 minutes walk to school, cord and I. And back home, no, sometimes she would pick me up. I remember one time I went to play at his house and one time I had breakfast at his house. And one time I saw the rabbit, I don't know if that was the same day, and that they eat carrots, I saw that too. And that's my friendship. Court never came to my place. He did not cross that line. And he probably was not a friend at all. He never proposed anything. He never said anything to me. He was intimidated, which I learned later, when Helga met him when he was like 18 or 19. And I didn't have any other friends. I never had a girlfriend who was there with me or for me, like ever. I don't know if you can hear me though. And I was in elementary school, and every half a year, oh, I sound like a broken record. In my exam, they would, stand, they would write down as the one phrase which would identify me as a person, independent from others, that I would always help other children to communicate with the teachers and to create peace. Ooh. Maybe we have a spy coming in, no, not yet. I don't know where I got that from, being beaten by the children. That was elementary school, yes, in elementary school. I'm just gonna let myself surprise you. I'm in a little glove right now, your phone, and whoever comes out of the other side, isn't that impressive? I mean, I hold a little thing in my hand, and <laughs> I love my fluffy glove. And something's gonna come out of there. And we can pose it and can listen to it. Do you don't think life is a miracle? A little device you can listen to this anytime you want. You don't even have to pay anything. Just like that. How impressive. I after elementary school in fifth grade I went to a different school. I didn't have a friend there either. But I met my cousin. She and my cousin he. But she was a popular girl and she was arrogant and sarcastic and I wasn't. I was like the nerd or the outsider, at least that's how I saw myself. And when I finally found a nice spot in seventh grade where I liked to be because we had music, then she took me out of there, of the school, of the music, of my cousin, of everything, of the group I was starting to go in. I'm back in the car. She took me off everything and brought me to an alcoholic household. My silver spoon. Okay. More to talk. And I had a crisis in eighth grade. Yeah, when we moved out of there. Um, the crisis actually began in seventh grade before we moved. No, she also blamed me for the move. And she promised me she would give me a, a drum set. Well, she said, whatever you want. And I said, drum set. But she didn't give me the drum set. 
Yeah, why would she blame me? So she wants to live with her boyfriend. I don't understand. You see, I still have to discern the whole shit load. I mean, to me, it makes just sense. Because she had promised that she would move me again until 18. And suddenly I was 11, 12, 13, no, 13. And again, we had moved when I was 10, we had moved when I was 11, 12, and now it's 13, we move again. I don't know if I mind the move, but I mind it not to be able to make music. I mean, moving within a, a specific neighborhood or the surroundings. And I was, I was, I was disappointed because I liked the school so much, which finally paid off that school. The first two years, fifth and sixth grade was like observation. And in seventh grade, finally the glory began where everyone, each of the kids could like select a topic. And I select music, so all kids who selected music was in my class were in my classroom. And the government had paid money for those schools, so we had all kinds of instruments. And she took me out of there and the group I was starting to become part of, she took me out of there. And my cousin, I mean, yeah, same age and my other cousin, her brother a little bit older, a year older. Well, I went on vacation with him. Oh, when I was fourteen I started cooking all of a sudden. That probably, maybe, it makes only sense. Because when I was 14, I escaped to Corsica, to that little island in the South France from Nice, with my cousin and my friend, who was older, who was 21. Yeah, my cousin was probably 16. And we ate like bolognese, that was a new thing for me. Pasta, spaghetti bolognese, that was like everywhere. I think I got inspired because my first dish was bolognese and I just invented it out of nothing. Yeah, there were lots of spices in that house. I could see them. Absolutely inconveniently located up, uh, on top of the stove. You know, when you cook, the whole grease goes into those. But I don't think anybody ever cooked there <laughs> because she bought TV dinners. Can you believe that? She wasn't much into cooking. Well, she was busy. She was a working person, so who can blame her? And I was good at cooking from right at the start because I trust my intuition. Well, honestly, with all the pain and suffering and hardship and loneliness and the betrayal, on the other hand, I found also like joy and not needing to deal with lots of BS in my life in terms of hanging out with siblings, peers, uncles and aunts and family members who constantly constantly picking on you. So being alone was actually not such a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, on the other hand, what it did to me, that loneliness was longing. Longing to be long, longing to be long, longing to be long, longing to be long, longing and longing, longing to be long. Like I was, like I was, yeah, like the joke said, Mommy, I don't want to go to Europe. Shut up and keep on swimming. <laughs> yeah. Keep on swimming, that's my life. Keep on swimming. Longing, longing to be long, longing, longing to be long. And now we found each other and you still can't see him. Oh, yes, my cuss word. I remember my cussing word. That's the one. <laughs> no, I don't cuss. <laughs> Let her long, long. You're all, you're all, 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 all,